Ready? What's up everybody? It's Rens from the I'm Renzi Academy helping you create amazing photo art in Affinity Photo. And today's video is going to be all about how to remove a background. If you love Affinity Photo or if you like photo manipulation in general, consider subscribing to my channel because I will share step-by-step -step photo manipulation tutorials as well as Affinity Photo tips and tricks and other cool creative content related to photo manipulation. Make sure to stick till the end because this video is full of tips and tricks and I will show you at the very end how I would approach this photo after removing the background. So let's rock into it. So to remove the background, we have to select the selection tool and we can find it here in the toolbar. It's this little icon or you can press its keyboard shortcut W. So with the selection tool selected, you can either choose to select the background or you can choose to select the subject. And in this case, with this scatter pillar, I think it would be easier to select the background because the background has quite the same color everywhere. So it would be pretty easy for Affinity Photo to sample pixels from the background and not mess it up with the foreground subject because the subject is pretty green and the background is pretty bluish gray. So let's start with selecting the background by just clicking and brushing over the background. As you can see, we already have quite a good selection here. You can see it right over here, the marching ants. I can zoom in a little bit for you so you can see it better. As you can see right over here, we selected the branch as well. We want only to select the caterpillar, including his feet and everything. So we zoom out by pressing command zero and we just brush over the rest. Now zoom in a little bit by pressing command plus and you can see that I selected a little bit too much over here. So I decreased the brush size by using the bracket keys. You can use the left bracket keys to decrease the brush size and use the right bracket key to increase the brush size. So now I decrease it by using the left bracket key. I hold alt to subtract from my selection and I brush over the parts that I want to deselect. An easier way to see if I missed something is by pressing Q. So when I press Q right now, I go into quick mask mode, which looks like this. Everything that's the normal color is selected and everything that's red is not selected. And remember, we were selecting the background. So obviously our caterpillar is not selected. You can see these black parts are selected, which I don't want at this moment. So hold Alt and brush over them. So I'm kind of working the other way around. Instead of selecting my subject, I select the background. All right, so as you can see, we got our caterpillar right now. So I press Q again to leave quick mask mode. And remember what I said, now I have the background selected. So if I would mask this out, I would mask my caterpillar out as you can see right here. And this I don't want, I want to mask out the background. So I press command C to undo that. And what I do now is invert the layer mask by pressing command shift I. So now I've got my caterpillar selected. If I press Q, you can see it right over here. So when I hit the mask icon now, you can see that the caterpillar is left. Now I want to select only the caterpillar and I don't want to select this branch, let's say. So there are a couple of ways to get rid of the branch and probably the easiest way is to use the quick selection tool again for the most part. So let's just select our branch. And let's try not to select our caterpillar. And let's not worry about too much about the outside feet, so to say, because we'll fix this in a moment. All right, so that's basically what we want. Only here I can select a little bit extra, like so. Let's press Q again to just check. Let's first invert our layer mask. So press Command Shift I and then hit Q. So now we can see what we've selected. I see that I missed the part over here. 
So because I inverted the layer mask, now I have to hold Alt because I want to make things red. And to make things red, or in other words, deselected, I have to hold Alt and brush over it. Just like so. Now what I told you, I want to include the other foot as well. Oops, here I forgot a little bit. I want to include the foot on this, this side of the branch as well. And this is actually pretty easy to do. As you can see, this foot is already selected. I just have to brush over it again. And there we have the foot. The first one, let's go to the second one. All right, so now we basically have everything selected. So we can press Q again to leave quick mask mode. And what I want to do now is fill my selection with black because this I want to uh, mask out. So as you can see, I have my mask selected and there are a couple of ways to do it. And the easiest way is just to go over here to the brush tool, uh, which is this icon right over here, or you can select it by pressing its keyboard shortcut B. Uh, let's select the brush tool and make sure the foreground color is set to black. And I made a mistake. I have everything else selected. As you can see, the marching ends are all the way across our canvas. So this means that I have my caterpillar selected and not the branch. This I don't want. I want to select the branch. So let's invert the layer mask again by pressing Command Shift I. And now when we brush over the branch with white, uh, sorry, with black, you can see that we would just simply remove the branch. Just like that. There are some lines over here that's, that are left, so let's erase, erase these as well. These we don't need. And there we have it. We have our cutout of our caterpillar. And it's not the best cutout as you can see, it's because of the hairs of the, bra of the plant, let's say, or the branch and the hairs of the foot. There are some ways to improve these, but I don't want to go too in depth with this. So I will just mask them out for now and make my mask a little bit cleaner. So let's go do that right now. Make the brush a little harder to give a nice sharp edge and simply brush over the parts that we want to fix. And when I click over here, I hold shift and I click over here, you can see that it actually makes, makes a straight line. This is not the best idea to do now because it's going to be really difficult to align all of these unless I would go sh click up here and go shift click down all the way here. And as you can see, we got a nice straight line in between all of my caterpillar feet. So let's clean this up a little bit more. If you want, we can always add the hairs later, of course, <clears throat> but I'm not going to cover how to do that in this core. Uh, sorry, in this tutorial. And let's clean this one up a little bit more because it looks kind of messy. We can also with white add again to our, to our um, mask. So now I'm painting with black to hide stuff but obviously when I select white like if I would want this part of the branch back I would select white and I would simply brush over it but I don't want that so let's continue with black and I think we're almost done this looks pretty good over here it looks pretty messy so let's fix this a little bit maybe just brush over it with white first so we have a clear view of what these feet would actually look like and now we simply switch to black again by pressing X. You can toggle between the foreground and the background color by using the X key. And now I just brush out the rest of the background. I'm doing this with a graphic tablet, so it's a little bit easier with a graphic tablet than with a mouse, obviously. So. If you're really into photo manipulation or affinity photo or this kind of work, it would be nice to have a graphic tablet, but it's not necessary. There are really good artists who do it without a graphic tablet. So that's all up to you. And I think this is starting to look pretty good already. Let's clean up this edge a little bit. Maybe this one. 
All right, so what we can do now to check our mask is hold the Option key or the Alt key on a Windows PC and click the mask. So now we can see a black and white overlay of our mask. And as you can see right over here, there is some black right over here. There is some black and right over here, there is some black, which we don't need because black is not selected and white is selected. So we want to make sure that this is as well uh, selected as well. So we brush over it with white. Just like so. Oops, let's fix this one a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Now to get out of this black and white mode, we just have to uh, click another layer. So we go over here and click another layer. And there we have our cutout of our caterpillar. And let's um, change the background so that you can actually see that it's a pretty nice cutout. So I created a new, new layer. I hold, press shift delete. This is a custom uh, keyboard shortcut. And I apply it with my secondary color. Now this doesn't work and the reason is because this mask is a separate mask so this mask right here it masks out everything below now so it also masks out this pixel layer this i don't want so i want to drag this mask to the bottom right corner of uh, the background layer so it actually clips to it and now you can see the black background appearing and you can see that we have a really nice cutout without any fringes just over here, maybe I could fix it a little better. So I select the black color. You can also toggle between white and black by pressing this little arrow, or you can do it by pressing X on the keyboard. So let's select black and let's brush out a little bit more of the face, let's say, to make it a nicer cutout. And here at the feet, you can see some green stuff going on. So let's target that as well and right over here and obviously it's green because the branch or the plant that the caterpillar was on is green as well so this reflects the light so now we got a cutout of the caterpillar and now we can basically do whatever we want with it so this is why it's really important how to know to remove a background in affinity photo if you want to do photo compositions or photo manipulations like i do and the cool way what we can do now is let's say we copy the scatter pillar and i found a nice image right over here and paste it in right here and with a caterpillar selected i can go up here to select my move tool or i can select it by pressing its keyboard shortcut v so i select the move tool right here and with the caterpillar layer selected so let's call it caterpillar and this is berlin so let's call this berlin let's select the caterpillar layer move it around and let's position it on the Fernseid Turm, which is the name of this building or structure. And let's simply align these feet with the tower. So this is the easiest way to make this a nice photo manipulation or composition. We simply have to align the feet. Let's rotate it a little bit and position it right like here. Now, we finally have our line which we can trace which is the line of this pole there's two ways to do it the easiest way is probably to just go to the lasso tool which is this one right here select this little icon right over here which makes it a polygonal lasso tool and we just click on the edge of this structure go down and click on the edge of the structure again right here and make sure to come all the way back to the beginning so now we have this selected and when we go into our mask and select the brush tool over here or we press the keyboard shortcut b we can simply brush over the parts that um sorry our selection that we just made to mask it out so now you can see we have a nice clean straight line right across the pole. I selected a little bit too much over here, which is not a big problem. So I changed my color to white, like so, and I brush from here. I hold shift and click down there to make a straight line. All right, and there we have it. 
So let me now show you how I would approach this image and how I would continue this image. I will do this in a fast forward, so enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a like. If you like my content and you want to learn more about photo manipulation or affinity photo, make sure to subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. Then I hope to see you in my next video.